Yo, a Sonic video that didn't take over six weeks to come out? I must be getting better at this. That's what I tell my therapist anyway. While I foam at the mouth for the much anticipated silver update to Grace Project 06, I figured I'd wet my palate a bit by delving into one of the game's less conspicuous features. Oh my god, he's dead! Multiple playable characters is somewhat of a Sonic staple, or rather it was a staple of many games in the 90s and 2000s, with Sonic adding more and more newcomers as the series went on. Why play as one character when you could play as two, or three, or... 12. This philosophy would debut as early as Sonic 2 with the introduction of Tails, although he didn't actually play any different yet. Poor boy got nerfed in his own debut. There was a co-op element thrown in, but it was more follow the leader than cooperative play, outside of boss fights. Alright Tails, try and keep up! It was Sonic 3 that set the bar by having three playable characters with their own abilities, and in the case of Knuckles, even some unique level assets, story, and bosses. You didn't have to play as them if you didn't want to, but they were there as extra content. Another way to experience experience the same campaign using alternate methods. Or from a marketing perspective, kids could choose their favorite colorful character that they felt a stronger connection with, a la TMNT. It also introduced us to the Echidna, because who the heck knew what that was? This is the blueprint that Sonic Adventure would use when taking the series into 3D. But to capitalize on such a climactic transition, and due to the nature of jumping dimensions, a few adjustments would be made. The playable roster was now double what it was before, boasting six different characters and wearing it like a badge of honor as one of its selling points. Totally not biting off more than we can chew, hey, I gotta respect the hustle. Instead of everyone going through the same campaign, however, the levels were all trimmed and tailored to suit each character's abilities and narrative. This was not a one-to-one -one translation of Sonic 3. Boost rings were added for Tails to assist in his flight. Knuckles had his whole objective restructured by needing to hunt for emerald pieces. Amy had to escape a robot, Gamma had explosives, Big was a big waste of time. The variety was at an indisputably all-time high, but at the cost of consistency. You'll notice that the further down the line we get, the more gimmicky and mini-game-like the playstyles become. Being a launch title for the Dreamcast, it's not surprising that a few of the characters would play more like tech demos to help show off what the console was capable of, but it's clear that corners were being cut. Not everyone got to travel to the same locales in the same order, they all had their own side of a concurrent story to tell. Putting them into different places at different times. Sonic may start in Emerald Coast and end in Final Egg, but Knuckles never even visits either. He starts in Speed Highway and ends at Sky Deck. Sonic's like, we have to stop Eggman, and he's just like, yo, that sucks, I'm going home. Now this is actually a good thing, as it allows each subsequent playthrough to feel more individual than the one prior, rather than a character swap of the same journey. But the content distribution is far from equal. Sonic has 10 full-length stages, and no one else gets nearly that many. Five, four, three total? I mean, Amy just got straight shafted here. And on top of having less, they're also much shorter, often relegated to a smaller portion of a bigger stage that Sonic would traverse in its entirety. Windy Valley is made of three parts, but Tails only gets the ending. Same with Knuckles and Speed Highway and Skydeck. Gamma's opening stage is like 20 seconds when you gun it. What is happening? To be fair, there are cases where a character's abilities will let you access a different part of the the same zone that Sonic himself couldn't, like the upper heights of Casinopolis. Sonic sticks to the bottom, playing pinball and going into the sewer like the addict he is, while Knuckles is given access to the very top, unseen by anyone else. Tails' speed highway has level geometry that only his flight can reach. The latter half of the cast have an entire stage built for them, Hot Shelter. Amy has a section of Twinkle Park all to herself in the Hall of Mirrors and it scares me. So to give proper credit, there was a successful inclusion and expansion of the Knuckles route concept from Sonic 3. It was the translation of a fully fleshed out campaign that was a bit rocky. Whether that was due to space limitations, time constraints, or a general lack of confidence in the profuse variety, if your name wasn't Sonic the Hedgehog, you were dealt a smaller hand some to the point where you could yell Uno. So naturally, when Adventure 2 came around, it sought to fix these very issues by keeping the same number of characters, but cutting the playstyles in half. The campaign was now divided into Hero and Dark, a mere two stories instead of the whopping six we had before, with each side containing the same three styles, running, hunting, and shooting. This meant that unlike Adventure 1, where you would play as a single character all the way to the credits, this had you frequently swapping out to someone else with levels made specifically for them. You weren't retreating treading the exact same ground multiple times over anymore, which was nice. Themes and assets would be recycled, but designs were unique. More importantly, everyone now had approximately the same number of stages and were all around a similar length. 
Emerald RNG notwithstanding. The final story was also given new life by having all the characters work together where they trade off one another in a giant stage. A pretty substantial upgrade from just a few cutscenes and a boss. It does lock you into playing as three characters to reach the ending, which the series had never done and could rub someone the wrong way if they only want to play as one character. But overall, the game is more evened out, trimming much of the unnecessary fat, although adding some of its own. So what did Sonic Heroes do going forward? It doubled the cast again. What absolute maniacs. I almost have to respect the insanity of such a power play. Adventure 1 had too much going on, so they scaled it back, then Sonic Team's like, eh, I kind of miss being stressed out, crank it back up. I mean, it's not that out of place, considering this was the first multi-platform 3D Sonic. They probably wanted to appeal to as many kids as they could, and they thought the best way was to stuff the game with more colorful critters than a claw machine. But of course, we all know that number is a tad misleading. Because while there may be 12 characters total, in reality, there is only one gameplay style. It just so happens to be one where you control three characters at once and can swap on the fly. But not in midair. They are different types, speed, power, and flight, but moving as a tree is what you do for the entire game. It's kind of funny, we went from everybody having their own campaign, to having their own levels, to having their own pieces of level where they shine. It's somehow the most and least varied. What a tenacious feat. The stories are back up to four, but each team plays basically identical to one another. Both in control and structure, it's the same 14 stages and seven boss fights every time. They function more like difficulty options, rather than a fresh take on the same journey. Team Sonic is normal, dark is the hard mode, with longer stages stages, more enemies and hazards, Rose is the opposite, easy mode, and Chaotix is a collection of various missions where you must stop having fun. So unlike Adventure 2, where every character had their own stages made for them, it's more like Adventure 1 and even Sonic 3, where the same ground is retreaded. Only instead of re-experiencing the same game with new abilities, it's the difficulty and story perspective that changes. So consistency is back, but ultimately we are left with less content, since there is only one true playthrough. So, where do we go from here? Destroy life as we know it. Shadow the Hedgehog is certainly an experimental product of its time, so it doesn't surprise me that they would strip back down to a single character for his self-titled romp. The focus is all on him, and while the others do appear as NPCs, you're playing as Shadow from start to finish. The only variance in gameplay being whether or not you decide to become a felon using guns, vehicles, or participate in the Chaotix-like mission structure. Yeah, real glad that made a return. But then, as if in response to the backlash Shadow would receive, Sonic Team decided it was time to issue a return to form for the adventure formula. And what better occasion than the 15th anniversary on the big jump into the seventh console generation? Well, another year couldn't have hurt. The rest is history, of course. We all know the story from there, but it's clear that Sonic 06 wanted to go big. It wanted to be what Twilight Princess would be for Zelda, an epic, modern take on what the fans already loved. And you can see the skeleton for that ambition in places like the soundtrack, the end of the world premise, the numerous CG cutscenes, Sonic Man, or in today's topic of interest, the character selection. They couldn't squeeze everyone in, but this is by far the largest amount of unique playable characters the franchise has seen in one game to this day. Yeah, Heroes had 12, but they were all palette swaps of the same three archetypes. 06 has nine different playstyles. Sonic, Shadow, Silver, Tails, Knuckles, Rouge, Omega, Blaze, and Amy. 13 if you count the secondary missions like Mock Speed, Carrying Elise, Snowboard, or Shadow's Glider. And while some traits overlap, Knuckles and Rouge gliding, Sonic and Shadow's homing attacks, everyone is given their own spotlight with personal touches. So how did they do it? Adventure 1 had six playstyles, nine if you count the minigames, and ultimately suffered from a lack of quality control. Since then, they've been downsizing to the point of abolishing the concept entirely. Well, contrary to its reputation and admittedly not up-to-code execution, they chose a very smart route to take in regards to distribution. The story is divided into three campaigns this time, each helmed by a different hedgehog. This is already a great start, because the one complaint that always surfaces when discussing the gameplay of non-Sonic characters is that they just aren't as fun to play as the Blue Man himself. Sonic is very nuanced, every component of game design is tailored to him. Rings, loops, rolling, slopes, clipping through- what the- When you throw some other guy into the mix, unless you do it right, you run the risk of compromising the very appeal your game had to begin with. Or massive changes have to be made to the gameplay to suit the character in question, at which point the appeal is once again at risk. So when two of the three main characters are already Sonic-like, we're in good shape. Yeah, Silver is an outlier, but 
Look, man, I'll take what I can get. However, this is where the shift is made. You do play as the main trio for the majority of their respective stories, but every so often, you'll hit a part mid-stage where you automatically switch to another character to complete an objective that only they can. Once that task is complete, you switch back and carry on as planned. This is how they were able to cram so many characters into one game. They knew they couldn't give everyone a full arc, there's just not enough time for that. And does this really look like a game that could handle more? But they could give them a moment to shine. A brief dedicated space that does them justice and wraps up before it has a chance to get old. It's sort of broken up into teams again. Tails and Knuckles will only appear in Sonic Story. Rouge and Omega in Shadows, Blaze and Amy in Silvers. The Hedgehogs even cross over somewhat too, but the key takeaway here is that all of these encounters are short. By employing such brevity, they could scatter these moments all throughout the game to give everyone a piece of the pie, while still keeping the focus on the main protagonist. It's precisely what I talked about in my mock speed video, and seems to be an attempt at a compromise to try and appease both sides of the audience. Those who like playing as Sonic's friends, and those who don't. What they've chosen is a respectfully minimalist approach where they're still included, but their screen time is cut down to more of an 80-20 split. Some may be disappointed that their favorite side character doesn't share the spotlight, but I think even they will be understanding when they consider just how many characters there are. At the same time, the people who weren't so fond of those other styles will likely be far more tolerant now that there's no risk of fatigue. Because let's be real, even the people who hate, say, the hunting stages, they're not complaining in Wild Canyon or Pumpkin Hill. With those beats, how could you? It's when they get to Aquatic Mine and Death Chamber where the screams of anguish take flight. When it's this quick, they don't even have time to register a complaint. In fact, some stages can be a bit on the longer side, so switching to a new face for a minute can often be a nice refresher. And who knows, maybe under this downsized structure, they might even come to appreciate the gameplay change-ups more than if they played a larger role. I think a lot of these subgenres work better as brief get-in, get-out minigames. They don't usually have the same degree of depth as Sonic, so keeping it short prevents any shallowness from showing. I'm not opposed to expanding upon these other styles in the future, I just don't know how much faith I have in Sonic Team to get it right, so I'd rather they focus more on the stuff they at least know how to do. Whatever that is. And besides, how they were incorporated into 06 I think was done quite well. Not everything's a winner, the Elise carrying missions take away the ability to spin dash and bounce, which severely limits how you can move through two of the best stages, really hoping Chaos X adds a way to play as default Sonic in trial mode. And when it comes to control, these are some of the worst incarnations of each character. But that is all due to the game's state of being. Conceptually, I like the roles everyone's been given. Flying around as Tails is fun enough in short bursts, and I like the team dynamic of one character getting stuck and the other needing to go ahead to help them out. It's less Sonic Adventure and more Sly Cooper in that regard, which I have no problem with. I also love how they've treated Knuckles. He can finally free roam without being bound by the shackles of a radar. His objectives still involve finding things in a semi-non-linear fashion, like in Flame Core when he has to light five orbs, but the wandering around aspect has been greatly trimmed and saved for Rouge. Out of the two, she was always more of the treasure hunter anyway. Blaze was always a fan favorite, mainly because she plays a lot like Sonic. I already made a whole video on Mock Speed and how that was integrated. Silver is more of a puzzle platformer, which with proper physics could be really fun instead of this! And I've always gotten a kick out of the main trio working together in Aquatic Base. It's incredibly fitting to have all three play their part and use their skills in the finale of Sonic Story. It also helps if you're on Project 06, where everything controls leagues better, but even on Vanilla, this general orientation is in full effect, and I think stands a better chance at widespread appeal than some of what we've seen prior. One of the franchise's biggest issues has always been its lack of consistency from game to game, and whether or not you like them, the other play styles have contributed to that. We went from one, to two, to one again, to three, to six, back down to three, then one, but it's three at once, then one on its own, then back up to three again, but it's really nine. It's had a hard time remaining sedentary to build on a strong foundation and figure out what worked, thus leading to the fractured fanbase ideals we face today. Some will blame Sonic Team for experimenting too much or rushing the games, or blame the fans for confusing them into doing it. But a confounding variable that a lot of us overlook is how the perception of multiple characters in games changed over time. Back in the 2D era, you were lucky if the game even had a second player. It was probably just a palette swap, too. If the game did have someone else to play as, it was like Mario 2 or Sonic 3, where you got to play as a slightly different version of the main guy. The game was virtually unchanged. It was how you played that differed. Don't like water? 
Neither do we. Skip it. And that was the expectation at the time. If you only wanted to be Sonic, you could do that. Tails and Knuckles were optional. Because a side-scrolling platformer in 1994 that took two hours to beat without dying was pretty standard. But when games went 3D, the standard changed. Suddenly the runtime was double, triple what it was before. There were cutscenes, hub worlds, loading screens if you were on a disc, freaking wait, fall damage. The whole gaming sphere had been turned around, and from that point on, all major AAA titles would keep going further to push how much content they could offer. Naturally, Sonic fell into this bracket, but because he's a lot faster than your average Joe Plummer and Thrash Candle Boot, he burns through assets and storage at like three times the rate. The amount of space and coding to produce a three-minute Mario stage would only get Sonic 60 seconds in if you're lucky, and Sonic doesn't revisit the same stage for multiple objectives like Mario did. This is why so many levels in Adventure one wrap around like a spiral staircase. It simulates going forward, but you're actually moving in a circle, taking up less space. That's all speculation, by the way. I don't actually have a source on that. Regardless of the technical prowess, though, I think it's safe to say that Sonic Team was afraid that they couldn't match that new standard using Sonic alone. His story is complete enough, but it's not much longer than Sonic 3 was in its entirety, which would have been fine pre-Mario 64, but times had changed. And so I believe those five extra campaigns were added primarily to beef up the runtime to rival the competition. Unfortunately, this is where the problem begins. What used to be considered optional was now arguably mandatory for getting your money's worth. Could you pay full price and feel satisfied only beating Sonic's story in 1999? Maybe. Maybe not, the line wasn't so clear anymore. And even if you did, you might still feel inclined to give everyone a fair shake. They all have their own icon in the menu, an individual side of the same story, a percentage of how much you've completed. By Adventure 2, you had to play as them to even see the credits. Heroes straight up tells you to try another team after beating one. Not to mention the whole final story business where you have to play as everyone to get the true ending. So there's definitely a silent nudge to get you into the other stories that didn't used to be there. Combine that with the new price to content ratio set by the industry and people began to feel like these once optional iterations of the same playthrough were now being forced upon them. This is why I think Sonic 06 strikes a perfect balance. Ideally, I'd like to see the classic method done in 3D, play the game all the way through as Sonic and then go through again as someone else if you want to, like a new game plus, but if they must have the multiple story angle aiming for that AAA standard, this is the metric I would go by, at least to reintroduce the concept. It gives you three main characters, two of which are very similar, and the rest having moments to shine without the risk of burnout. Most of the fan favorites are here and accounted for, and the spotlight remains on high-speed platforming. With the right people in charge, you could craft a fantastic title from that. In all honesty, I'm okay with being Sonic on his own, since he's always been the best part of his games. Shocker, right? But I'm open to any idea that has good execution behind it. In the meantime, Project 06 will likely have another update at some point in the near future. Origins is coming soon, and I will dive in headfirst when that time comes. Thank you guys so much for watching, and as always, don't forget to check out the next episode whenever I post it, which will probably be soon. All right. See ya. That's a nice argument, Mephilus, but why don't you back it up with a source? My source is I made it the f*** up. <laughs>